walking late at night And the rain is pouring down I'd like to see your reflection in the street Clouds will hide the moon Throwing shadows across our path Nothing will ever hide the way I feel We're at Larry Hayes paddle out. I think there's about 400 people here. It's a beautiful day. It's like they were spotlighted as they were splashing him up to the waves above. About 400 people. I'm Barbara Kermas. Like, where's Larry's house? I'm like, uh, you gotta go one shoot over, Uncle. And so, but that from that moment, I just obviously your uh, immediate thoughts and and everything goes towards let the uh, responders do their job, and uh, we'll all pray. But talk of, the first word that came to my mind was irreplaceable. The guy was amazing at everything he did uh you know charismatic not quiet that's for sure but he spoke a lot with what he was able to produce and you got i mean fluid combustion and just going way back to the pioneers of capturing surfers from the water angle being disciplined enough to focus on that and I would look at what he's like carting around and swimming around there with like, bruh, I, I can, you know, my surfboard is like enough, but the camera that he's holding and the angles and the shots that he's trying to hold and get were uh, truly one of a kind. And he's irreplaceable, uh, but we're gonna do our best to celebrate, remember, and um, we're gonna have an opportunity later on after we paddle out and uh, put him where uh, he belongs in the ocean, I think it was where he spent probably <laughs> how many hours? Gosh, uh, all of the footage you see that's probably archived, you can multiply that by however amounts it gets to, you know, to get those kinds of shots. Uh, but we're going to put him there here at sunset, and then we'll come back and we'll have time to share if anybody wants to tell a story or two or three. Uh, we'll be reconvening back over here. But uh, I just want to thank all of you for coming as a North Shore community, as a family. It's never, never easy. It's great to see everybody, but the circumstances are bittersweet. So we just want to uh, make sure we engage here and uh, honor Larry. And I'm going to hand it over to Larry's brother, Rick. Please welcome Rick. Uh, thank you. Uh, first thing I'd like to say on behalf of our family is just how appreciative we are to the love uh, that the surf community has already shown us, as this is part of an example of. Uh, the people of Hawaii, um, we just can't thank you enough for the uh, kindness and love uh, that you've shown our family. I mean, a lot of you people don't know me, and I've already had so many people come up and tell me so many wonderful stories about Larry. And one thing I, one of my favorite, or when my kids were even small, one of our most favorite things is just when Uncle Larry, we always referred him to, would just come to our house in his worldwide trips and just start telling stories. You know, we were just mesmerized by all this. And now I've experienced a lot of things with my brother and myself. Um, and before I forget, get off on a tangent, after we come back from the paddle out, after celebrating his life, uh, we are so thankful you've shown up to do that. Uh, if you guys have any personal stories you'd like to share with me I would, as his brother, our family, I'd just love that opportunity to hear them. Um, 
But my brother was unique in his love for Hawaii. Um, I was always on the, on the mainland, never really understood it until I've actually started to experience it over here. But when we graduated high school, he never looked back. He came straight over here and basically for the last 40 years, he's pretty much been in the water every day. And for you guys that know him, it's kind of unbelievable. I mean, I'd come over to see him and yeah, he, he would be out of the house at six surfing and then go do something. I mean, he was just constantly in the water living life. And for those of you who saw that on the news where how many people live and die doing what they love, really? I mean, the last event of his life, he actually filmed surfing a wave, turns around, smiles in the camera, and two minutes later, he's gone. But if I can go, I guess that's the kind of the way I want to go. But just to show you his love for Hawaii, all he talked about, he tried to explain to me all the Hawaiian words, and I, I think he was, he definitely was Hawaiian throughout, through and through, um, and he really carried that, and he really represented Hawaii uh, whenever he wasn't here, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you just, he held the ocean in absolute reverence and wonder. And uh, I'll just share one little story because it's one of the most amazing things I ever experienced, and it's probably not a big deal for him, but my family were visiting him about 15 years ago, and again, you guys have all your own stories, but um, he was doing some surf thing in the morning. We were at Waimea Bay. Me and a friend of mine were in an ocean kayak, and we're outside the you know, wave. It's not that, it was nice and flat that day. We're just paddling around in Waimea, and we see something out in the horizon. I mean, it was way off in the horizon, and we just kind of, it just looked unusual to us, and you know, we didn't really think much of it, but it kept getting closer and closer and closer. Anyway, long story short, it, we thought it was, you know, like some swimming sea turtle on the, on the water. It turns out it's Larry, but he was coming from the horizon, I mean, into Waimea Bay. And I'm like, and Bart and me look at each other, Frick, that's Larry, man. So it wasn't like he took a board and went around, you know, the corner. I mean, this guy was coming in from the frickin' horizon. He says, guys, you gotta follow me. So, okay, he turns around and we're two guys paddling as fast as we can. He's just, he, he's not, this was about 15, 16 years ago. And he's just on his knees, just grinding with his hands. And we're barely able to even stay with him. He takes us about at least a quarter mile off of uh, Wahoo, where now Waimea looks tiny to us. I'm like, holy crap. And then he just told us to be quiet, and we did. And the next thing we know, we're surrounded by a pod of humpback whales. And it was like the most spiritual. And he told us, just chill, man. Don't bother him. And then we had our mask, so we just rolled off, held on to the ocean kayak, and just watched. And... Um, the only reason why I tell you that is he, for some of you, he he had this way with the ocean that um, for those of that, you guys that know, he wasn't happy unless he was in the water every day. And I don't know physically how he did it, but he did it. And um, that was one of the most epic days of my life that I was able to share with him. And then just recently we started sailing together, just me and him in the Caribbean and diving and it was just so wonderful just being able to connect that uh, a couple other little things about him that was so unique is that he actually cared for everybody he really did um he'd give you the shirt off his back um and always smiled so I'll, when he took that laugh wave and looked into the camera and smiled saying goodbye to us that's how he was, you know, just the way he lived every day. He's one of the few that never really worked a day in his life because what he did, he loved so much. He, I was the one thing I was envious of him because he, he honestly did every day what he never compromised. He lived it. 
and he lived it hard and to his family he loved hard he really did so um again if you have any stories let us know rick thank you very much We'll have uh, some words from our kahuna here, and very lovely to have you. Mahalo for coming out for my hanai, my adopted son now. They call him my young please excuse me, because uh, he was near and dear to me. I did so many blessings for him and I didn't, it didn't matter what time, as his brothers share, what time of night or morning or of the day that he needed me, I would drop everything and move, move myself to the location that he desired for a blessing or his family or his dogs, whatever it was, I dropped everything. and. Within me, as I speak this day, there, there will never be another Larry Haynes. And even my own son, who was a lifeguard out at Waimea, and I just, he was a Pisces, so he was a fish in the water and out of the water. And he knew uh, my relationship with Larry, and um, he also appreciated Larry as another brother. However, the pure unconditional love, no strings attached, it created that my son, who's a Pisces and he loves the water and he's an ace at it, he even got a bit envious of Larry. And that in a way was pretty touching and I had to let him know he needs to release that minus because Larry was very heaven sent and sent to us in Hawaii. And I want to thank his ohana that they protected him in their own way and they loved him and they really appreciated everything about this special, unique person. And I'm grateful to Keakua for bringing in here and I thank each and every one of you that were able to make it and those that weren't that you will be blessed when you hear whatever the communication is from this place on Oahu uh, regarding because Larry's spirit at some point will be sent to all of us as we experienced last night and this morning at his home. Mahalo. Thank you very much. If you would like Kahuna to bless you, she does have ample blessings, Larry blessings, plenty of Larry to go around. I believe that's pretty much how we, if you've met and known him and seen him in action, I mean, I don't know when the guy slept. He was filming for eight hours plus in the water. Then, like our brother Abe said over here earlier, I heard him talking about, you know, when they're on the ski together, he's like, oh, where are we going to surf after this? Like, bruh, I'm going to go relax after this. He was just animal, go, go, go. Um, so we are going to um, send off Uncle, brother, Larry, right here at Sunset. Um, just a couple of things before we get going over there. Um, the wind is very strong, obviously, so we're going to have an anchor that will kind of have uh, our, our my canoe that will be kind of an anchor point that we can form the circle off of there. I'll have some of the family uh, on board that. We've got jet skis as well. Um, so just keep in mind the wind is really blowing. There's a little bit of shore break. Uh, some swell is filled in overnight, and you're flowers if you're going to throw them please uh don't throw the string we'll take the string uh out and put that in your pocket and then throw the flowers 
Um, and just be mindful of everybody. I think the shore break is going to be our, our, you know, shore break and wind are going to be our two biggest things we want to pay attention to. So if you see somebody who needs a hand, please lend a hand. And uh, once we get out there, we'll form a nice circle. I believe we have um, one of our friends that will be bringing the helicopter to drop some flowers on us as well. So we'll have uh, that organized. But um, from here, we're going to safely make our way across the street and safely make our way down to the shore break. And uh, whoever's staying on shore, we appreciate that very much, keeping an eye on things. And then everybody who's paddling or swimming out, just keep in mind that we're uh, going to be blowing around a little bit and we'll all join hands when we get out there. And then we'll come back here for more sharing of, of stories and uh, more remembering and, and celebration of a, a very full life lived. All right, let's go. Sunset Beach today to say goodbye to surfer and cinematographer Larry Haynes. You can see he was well liked by many, many people on the North Shore. Aloha. Yeah. 